Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. When Adobe released version 11 of Lightroom Classic, many of us were wrapped up talking about the new masking features found in this version. Well, this version also has some new metadata features. In this video, I'm going to talk about that. When you're in the library module of Lightroom on the right hand panel in the metadata tab, you'll notice that there's two new headings here. Now right now they're grayed out on mine, but you'll notice one heading is called target photo, the other is selected photos. Now the reason why they're grayed out right now is because I only have one image selected in the film strip, or in my case the grid. To get them active, all I need to do is select more than one image, so I'll just select two. Now I have two images selected, you can see both of those headings are active. If I'm on target photo, what it will do is it will show me selected metadata for the active image, the targeted image, that's this one, image 9. If I click on image 10, then it will show me selected metadata for that image. Now if I want to see metadata for all the images that are selected, I click on the other heading, heading selected photos. Then it will show me metadata for all the images that happen to be selected in the grid or the film strip. Any uh, fields that have different data between the images, you'll get this heading called mixed because obviously the file names are different for these two images, so it just shows mixed. Now, when you're in this default view up here on this drop down, you could see there's these different things you could look at, different types of metadata you could look at. When you're in the default view, you could actually edit what is shown here. So, what this allows you to do is customize your view of metadata so that you see all the time exactly what you need to see. Many of us maybe want to look at the file path. Where is this image on our computer? Well, we could actually customize that and add that here. Or maybe there's something else we often look at, exposure info. We could add that here as well. Now to do that, make sure you're in this default view. At the bottom, when you're in default view, you'll have a customize button. Click on that and you'll see that you could just add and remove things with a simple check mark. Now I want to see, I mentioned the, um, the where it is on my computer, so the actual file path. That's called the absolute file path. So I could add that and I want to see exposure info. So I'm going to put exposure down right there. So I want to see those two fields. So I'll click done. And when I do that, what you'll see down here is I got the exposure info. They happen to be the same exposure for the two images that I have selected, but of course the absolute file path is different for these two images. So let's just click on a different image right here, and you can see there's my absolute file path. If I want to go to it, click on this little arrow right here. When I do that, I have a Mac, so a Finder window opens up and brings me to that image. If you have a PC, your File Explorer window will open up and you could then go right to that image. So I could customize this. Now furthermore, I could actually change the order. Like maybe I don't want exposure at the bottom. I want it further up. I could just go to customize again. And then right here, arrange. And when you do that, you'll see you have these uh, little like three lines where you could click and drag something. So I can move exposure up um, under copyright status, let's just say, for the sake of argument. So you could see... I moved exposure up there. So you could totally customize what is in this default metadata view. Um, again, you may want to do this because you often are looking at specific metadata of an image and you're going through the drop down and you're clicking on e EXIF data or IPTC data, trying to find it, and you're going through all those different fields that are in that because that shows all the IPTC data or all the EXIF data. This way you could put what you need to look at in the order you want it in this default panel and be able to view it as, you know, um, a little more easily, I guess, um, again. So again, if you select all of them in this case, I'll just select all and you can see it says mixed here, it says mixed there, mixed and mixed because I have more than one image selected. but 
Uh, there is one other thing you could do. This makes it a little easier to edit metadata. So if I'm on this image here and I want to edit something, what right here, right to the left of this drop down, if I click on that, it puts you in edit mode. And what it will do is it will remove any field that isn't editable. For example, the file path isn't editable, editable, the exposure info isn't editable, and the folder isn't editable. So when I click on this, it removes those and others that aren't editable, and it only leaves fields that are editable, and it blanks them out for you, or it deletes what was in there for you, and allows you then to easily come in and type in, let's say, a new file name, or a new title, or a new capture, or a new copyright info, new copyright status, and so on, a new star rating. So you could easily come in and quickly do that, and then as soon as you click Customize, it will save that data. Now, I'm not going to do it because I didn't want to edit the metadata, but you could very easily not only view the metadata you need to view, you could edit the metadata you need to edit with this new metadata or these new metadata features that are found in virtual version 11 of Lightroom. Wow, I can't talk today, I'm sorry. Anyway, that's it. That's all I wanted to do. That's really just the new features uh, as far as metadata is concerned in Lightroom Classic. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon. <music>